The great big whip cleanup of the last month has been a huge success and I'm really excited to share the progress that I've made. I have two finished objects to share, plus progress on pretty much everything that's been lingering other than one, and I have a brand new project to share with you today. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to Good Knits. I'm Sherry, this is podcast number 12. For those that are new here, uh, I currently live in Amsterdam with my husband and we are originally from Canada but have been in Amsterdam for seven years now. We actually just celebrated our Amsterdam anniversary on February 28th. And kind of exciting, I know it seems like a random year to celebrate, um, but every year we try to really honor the fact that, you know, we made this huge life change, we moved to Amsterdam and you know, it was also a really special day for me because I spoke in an event around my leadership journey into product management and it was for a room full of women and I just really loved reflecting back on the story of, you know, my career in general, but how I also ended up in Amsterdam, you know, we fell in love with the city on our honeymoon and ended up moving. Felt really special to be talking about that on the day that I moved here seven years ago. And I know I got lots of really nice comments from women after saying how inspiring they found my speech or my talk. And that just meant a lot to me. It really felt like, I don't know, like we belonged here now. Um, I think if anybody is an expat, you maybe know moving can be a bit difficult. It takes a while to really settle in and find your people. And I think finally, after seven years, it really feels like that's happening for us. I have quite a lot of exciting stuff to share today. And I talked in my last podcast how I was trying to use the last month to really finish up a bunch of lingering projects that I've had. So I have quite a few whips that have been sitting on my needle since last fall or, you know, maybe last December. And I was just tired of having this growing whip list. So I really wanted to just put my head down, try to get a few things off my needles and go into spring kind of with a fresh start. And I think I've really accomplished that. I have a few things that maybe still need a bit more time, but that's okay. I feel like I'm close. So where January was sort of my monogamous month and I focused almost entirely on my Monday sweater and I think one small project, I think I had a hat. Um, February was really working on all the things all the time as a way to really work down that whip list. And I will say that I ended up clearing off three whips and I made progress on the other two. So actually my entire whip list saw progress and I only have four whips on my needles right now. I have my blouse number two, my turtle dove shawl, my Berlin scarf and my new project, which I'll talk about in a second. So only three of those were started last year. And really I can make progress now on all of them and they're all pretty close to being done. So I think within this month I'll be completely fresh start. I think the most frustrating thing about the whips that I had was they were pretty much all in this state of finishing details. So it's like fringe on the Berlin scarf, the trim on the cami number nine. And so I was having a really tough time finding the motivation to actually get those things done or the turtle dove shawl, you know, trying to fix the eye cord so that I could actually continue without having to rip it out. So I didn't have anything really that I could just pick up and knit on, which was also really frustrating. After I did that uh, speech um, on my anniversary, the next day I actually had to take a 6 a.m. train to Paris and I was like, what do I bring on this trip? Do I cast on a new project? Do I take my cami and just try to finish it? So I ended up taking my cami and I will have that to share today. But first, Let's start because I think my first finished object ties in really nicely to what I'm wearing, which is my Cumulus blouse from Petite Knit. I finished this, I believe, back in 2022, and I bought a sweater's quantity of this Olivia and Oliver Fibers Luau yarn, which has this nice little speckle detail, lots of different colors in it. 
and I ended up not needing anywhere near all of it. Uh, I think I bought four skeins and I only needed I think two and a half to actually finish the sweater. So I've since just had a ton of leftovers that I've been trying to work down over the last couple of years. And I first made um, a pair of, well, my first and last pair of socks. So this was my I'm So Basic socks from Summer Lee. Oh, there's a hair hanging off of them. Um, which, here, getting close. Um, and actually these didn't go very well. I made the heels different so you can see I really messed up the heel there. This is the correct version. <laughs> um, and they just, they don't fit right. So they end up sliding right off my foot. So this was sort of a great, I used the yarn. Yay, I made my first pair of socks, but they're not very practical and they're more just a I'm proud of myself piece. But then I also had, um, I think, 120 something grams left. So I ended up making it Christmas, uh, an Oslo hat for my sister-in-law in what I thought would be the remainder of the yarn that I had. And I still had 87 grams left because after I got home, I was like, oh, I really like that hat. I wish I had more so I could make myself one and I was thinking about ripping out my socks so I could use that yarn for something I would actually wear and then as I was going through my yarn stash I ended up finding an extra 37 grams which was quite a lot of the yarn so I have my first finished object here which is my Oslo hat and I will say this might be the most perfect version of this Oslo hat I've ever made so this is petite knit um, it is my Olivia and Oliver Fibers Classic Sock Luau paired with Tilia Soft Silk Mohair from Phil Kalana in truffle, light truffle. And this is the most perfect join that I've ever done. <laughs> um, I did mess up the first time and have to go back and redo it, but the second time around I got one for one stitch count and I was like admiring my decreases yesterday. And I really think these are the most perfect looking and even decreases I've ever had. So even with Magic Loop, um, I don't seem to have any weird laddering, which never happens. So I don't know what I did different. Um, let me just pop this on. So typically I make this hat in a size small for myself, but I really haven't liked that the last couple have been very tight on my head. And when I made the medium for my sister-in-law, I really liked that it had this kind of top hangy bit, which I think is more how it's supposed to fit. So even though I have a small circumference for a head, I decided I would size up. And I'm really, really happy with the fit of this. So I think, you know, it covers my ears perfectly. It's got nice room up here and just the pairing of these two yarns together. Let's fix my hair. Um, the pairing of these two yarns together is just really, really soft. So I think this is a nice, um, somewhat basic looking hat with still some visual interest. I obviously would not wear these two together and you can actually see there's a slight um, color difference. So. This cumulus uh, knitting for olive soft silk mohair in uh, mushroom rose, and this one is obviously the light truffle, so slightly darker brown. And you can see there's quite a difference um, here. So that's my first finished object. This hat used just over half a skein of the classic socks, so you definitely couldn't get away with just like a 50 gram ball of yarn if you wanna make a size medium in the Oslo, but you can get away with just one skein, so 100 grams. And how much did this cost? So I did not capture the total cost of this project like I usually do with my finished objects because I bought this yarn back in 2021 and I've been using the yarn all over the place. Um, I think this was roughly 30 euros for a hat between the mohair and the Olivia and Oliver fibers. I think it's usually 20, 25 euros per skein. Um, but yeah, sorry, I didn't capture <laughs> the cost like I usually do on that. 
So that's finished object number one. And then the second one, which I am so happy I finished, is my Cami number nine from My Favorite Things Knitwear. So if you were here for podcast 11, I believe, no, 10, I basically said in there, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to finish this. I, at that point, had done one of the armholes. I picked up 10 few two stitches. So I think you're supposed to have 154. I had picked up 144. I knit the entire thing, started to sew it down, tried it on, and it was so tight. Um, so I was like, there's no way I'm gonna wear this. I need to go back and fix it or it's just gonna be a complete waste of time. So I went back, so actually, no, let me start over. I decided to put that one on hold and I was like, I'll finish the neck and the other armhole, let's see how it goes. And then if that works out, I will go back in and actually rip out the first armhole and start over. So I first did the neck and that one much easier. The only thing is, um, you can really see, so my sew down is a little bit sloppy um, and that's just because uh, the first time trying to sew down I wasn't paying as much attention to exactly how it was folding over and therefore um, I was maybe putting my yarn in the incorrect hole sometimes. But then on the second armhole um, I would say I did much better and especially on the back here. So that's what it should look like, and that's much cleaner. So picking up the correct number of stitches, it definitely fits much better. I'll insert some B-roll here so that you can see it on. Um, it definitely is, you know, loose fitting, really comfortable. I knit this in, I didn't talk about the yarn, knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in, or sorry, not Cotton Merino, knitting for Olive Merino in Bottle Green. And this really is the most perfect green for me. This is my ideal. If everything could be in this color, I would be happy. So I love this color. I think, you know, this is so soft to wear. I will get a lot of use out of this. And I think actually ripping out the trim isn't too difficult. So I think what I might do is go back in at some point and adjust the neck and really make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, and really the trim did not take as much time as I was expecting. So I think it would take two to three hours to knit the 18 rounds on two millimeter needles that you need before you fold down. And then I timed myself on the train to Paris and each sew down took roughly 30 minutes, which is nothing. I thought that would take like two hours per piece of trim. So I actually brought this as my only project on that work trip and finished it on the train ride. <laughs> so the train ride there, not even the train ride back. So I didn't really have much to work on, um, but that was nice. I think having made this now, seeing how long it really takes to do those finishing details, I would be less scared to make this again. There were a ton of ends to weave in, so that was probably my least favorite part, is really having to go in and clean all of that up. And I did notice, um, so I did, I think, what's it called? I think it's called the Welft Join. I'll look this up and insert if I got that wrong. Um, but I did a Welft Join, and I don't know, if you can't see it here, you'll be able to see it in the B-roll. Um, there is like a clear line right here um, that shows like how I did that join and I don't really love that because when I wear it that's exactly where it sort of stretches out of my chest and so it's quite evident that there is that join there but there's nothing I can do to fix that at this point I'm not going to go back and adjust so um, I've since found some new favorite methods to join that don't have that, but you are still weaving in the ends at the same time. And actually, if I remember, I'll try to insert um, the one that I just posted on Instagram from somebody last week. And then I would say like still my least favorite part of this top is this bottom folded trim. 
that really was the most difficult um, and you really need to make sure that that lifeline is really evident in your project so that you can see it when you're going to sew up that bottom. Um, when I block this, so actually let me look at my notes. My pre-block length for this is 28 centimeters and my width was 34.5. And let me see what it was supposed to be. So length on size small. So this was knit as a size small and length is supposed to be 29 centimeters. So I was one centimeter off uh, pre-block and circumference was uh, 73. So yeah, I was a few centimeters off on that as well pre-block. Um, I did decide to do a full wet block on this, no drain and spin because I really wanted to try to get as much length out of it as possible. When I put this on for the first time pre-blocking, it felt really short, like very cropped on me. Also because it hadn't loosened up in width, it just felt really tight and constraining. Um, so I wanted to do full wet block to get as much as I could out of it. In blocking, I was able to get quite a lot of length out of it. So I think I got it easily up to 32 centimeters. Um, but then the second that I wore it, it kind of shrunk back up a bit because for my bust, it needed to stretch more. So I ended up with closer to an 80 centimeter total bust, even though the size small is 73. And I think a lot of that has to do with, I accidentally used 3.25 millimeter needles on this project, um, which actually ended up being a really good mistake. I didn't mean to do that, but it worked out well because it gave me a little bit more room. It just means the gauge isn't quite as tight. So if I were to make it again, I think I would stick with a 3.25 or if I went with three to get the tighter gauge, then I would probably knit a size medium. Um, but yeah, so I think because this stretched a little bit more in width for me, it ended up shrinking the size or the length back up. It's okay because I can still tuck it in. It sits nicely over my jeans. For the most part, it goes with all my clothes. So it's not something where I'm gonna go back in and fix the length of this one because I can't, I just, yeah. I don't wanna do that folded hem again, um, at least no time soon. So I'm gonna leave this one as is. I think it was a good learning. I do think I would make it again, probably not immediately, but I really enjoyed this. So um, yeah, I think there's a few learnings for me to take into future projects on this add a little bit more length, maybe stick with the slightly bigger needles and be more careful on the trim. Final project cost on my cami number nine was $29.65. So I am counting the fact that I bought three balls of the yarn for that, even though I only used around two and a half, but that cost is gone now. Um, so I would say for this quality of top, uh, and this yarn, definitely good price. Um, you know, I will wear this a lot. It's a great layering piece. And I think that's easily what I would spend in retail, if not more for that quality. So money well spent, still one of my favorite yarns, highly recommend. I do also make want to make one point that I used. So actually the trim on this was two, no, two millimeter needles. Um, and I found with my chow goos, no matter how much I tighten them, one of them kept coming loose, which was super annoying. So I had to be really careful. Like if I felt like my yarn was uh, not sliding easily at all, I had to go double check to make sure my needle wasn't untwisting and usually it was. Has anybody else had that issue with the chow goos, especially on the smaller sizes? And is there a way to fix for that? Or is it just something you have to be really careful about? Blocking this one also made me think for my Monday sweater that I really wanted to go do a full wet block again. So I mentioned in the last podcast, my sleeves were a little bit short on my Monday sweater. It didn't end up quite at the measurements that I wanted. So yesterday I did do a full wet block. It's still drying. I'll report back in my next episode. Um, but I do think the drain and spin, because it's soaking like or taking so much water out of the garment, I think if you do need a little bit more stretch, you're not getting as much flexibility to be able to mold that final 
shape, um, which I think is fine for a lot of pieces, but if you have anything where it's not quite right, something feels off and you really do need to try to get that extra length or width out of something, then I'll let you know if it works for me, but it does seem like um, from just getting the Monday sweater onto the mats that I gained around three centimeters per sleeve, which would, I think, put me at the perfect length. And if that doesn't work, then I have decided I'm gonna go back and probably um, cut out the rib and then do some more stockinette and then Kitchener stitch or like graft them back together. But I'm hoping that I don't have to do that. If I can just get a few more inches out of each sleeve, I think I'll be happy with the Monday sweater. And honestly, I really love that piece. I wear it, I think I said already after I had it for like a week, I was wearing it almost every day. And that still remains true. Even with the two short sleeves, I've been wearing it multiple times a week. I love it. So I really wanna make sure that that one's perfect. And if I get the length of the sleeves, I think I'm gonna be really happy with it. Those are the two finished objects that I have. And I am super close on a few other projects, but first let me talk about my turtle dove shawl. So I brought this up last episode to say, I think I had a fix. So I'll insert some B-roll because I did post a video for this. Um, but previously this was really, really tight. Like it had actually bunched in on itself on this I-cord edge and that was causing it to kind of like do a circular loop um, that wasn't working. And so I really felt like uh, I was gonna have to go back and rip this whole thing out. And what I realized when I was working on my Berlin scarf is I was accidentally carrying up a tiny little thread which was causing it to bunch in on itself. So I was like, okay, I hope that's what happened on this turtle dove. And this is by Sari Nordland, by the way, it was part of her um, mystery cal uh, over the holidays. That's when I cast it on. So I last week decided to just do the first four I cord stitches there and see if I did have that little thread. And indeed, I did have a tiny little thread that was being carried up the side. And the second I dropped that, the whole thing loosened up. And now this is right back to where it should be so that I can just continue knitting as I was in pattern. So this will end up back on my needles for sure. Um, I'm not in any rush to finish it at this point because we're nearing the end of the season, but I am hoping that you know, similar to the cami in that, I will just have a burst of energy one day. I'm on the decreases now. So I think if I just dedicate a day of knitting to it, I'll probably be able to finish it up. So that makes me really happy because I really love the color of yarn on this. Um, it is Gepard Wild and Soft Eggplant paired with the Knitting for Olive um, Aubergine or Eggplant color. And I really want this um, as a nice winter piece. It suits me really well color-wise. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I just wanted to give an update that I did fix that. I'm really excited about it. Also that I solved my own knitting issue. So that's one whip. Then the other whip, which is part of my cowl. So the finish the blouse cowl, finish that blouse cowl that I'm running on Instagram. This is, oh, and it looks super blue in this light, apologies. Uh, this is my blouse number two from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I started this last September with the intent of finishing it in fall. And it's really picking up all the threads from my wool blanket that I knit under. Um, so I finished the body this week. And well, actually last week, and it has this gorgeous side seam detail. So a faux side seam. And then last Sunday, I picked up the sleeve. I bound it off yesterday. It is feeling a little bit too short, but like you can see, so this is the pattern normally, and it does stretch a lot. And so I'm expecting and blocking that it is going to grow quite a bit. Um, and if it doesn't, then I will probably need to buy more yarn because just the sleeve alone took nearly two full balls of the, um, drops cotton merino in marine blue. I forget the exact color number. 
eight, I think it's eight. So I was expecting each sleeve to take one ball and I only have one and I think like 0.75 of another ball remaining. So I was like, oh, okay, I really need to just bind off for this and then block it. And if it doesn't work out, I'll go back in and fix it after I buy another ball. But I don't want to buy like one more ball of yarn if I don't actually need it. Um, what else was I going to say on this? Oh, yeah. So for the sleeve, the pattern actually surprisingly states how many pattern repeats you will likely need in the sleeve to achieve 41 centimeters of length for the size small. And I got to the 16 repeats that it suggested and it was basically, I'll do it this way, it was pretty much like here on my arm, just a little bit under. So I kept going, I ended up doing 20 repeats, so it's an eight row repeat. And that got me to around 39.40. So I still am a little bit um, low, but I do know my gauge swatch was accurate on this. And so I am thinking this yarn itself is gonna grow quite a bit. And yeah, when I tried it on, so I did make sure to try it on before I uh, bound off, it did seem like it would get to the point I wanted, which is like just below my wrist bone there. Um, so I'm planning to probably start the second sleep today. I, as part of the cal, have until the end of the month to finish this. Uh, I've also loved seeing all of your projects, so maybe I'll insert a few here of the ones that uh, have been coming across. It's just been nice knitting this with people and having kind of that community feel and the motivation. I feel like a lot of people had this project lingering on their needles for quite a bit. For most, it seems to be, I think I'm the only one knitting blouse number two. Almost everybody is knitting blouse one. Yeah, not even blouse one light. Uh, I think just blouse one. So they're looking great and people for that blouse specifically are moving way faster. So I think everybody that's kind of cast it on is close to done, if not done. Um, whereas this grows very slowly because you really have to memorize that eight row repeat. And then, yeah, it's just hard to get into a bit of a rhythm. I have memorized it now. It does go a little bit faster, but it's still not the quickest knit. So once I do this project once, I don't see myself doing it again, but it is beautiful. The other thing I want to say on blouse number two is, so on the body, I didn't really have many issues with the pattern, um, but for some reason on the sleeve, and I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to find my mistakes, which is a good thing because then on the final version, you won't be able to see. Yeah, I can't see any of them. Okay, well that's a good sign. I can't actually see any of my mistakes, but I have had these weird cases where I'm ending up with slightly, or not slightly, I'm ending up with like extra yarn overs it seems. Um, so I'm sure I will find them all after I stop recording this episode, but I've had I think three different times where something seems off in the pattern and I have messed up a stitch somewhere, um, but this well, this yarn color is super forgiving because it's so dark and this pattern is also very forgiving because there's so much going on that, you know, unless you really stop and look, I don't think you're going to notice. But definitely this is one where I have a lot of mistakes in it, but it's not worthwhile to go back and fix it. I also don't think I'm in any rush to work with um, a cotton yarn again. I say that I'm going into summer. I'm sure I will be. Um, but it's very splitty and especially working with the chow goos, it's maybe a reason to switch to my Addy Click um, needles, which are a bit less sharp. My chow goos really like split the yarn. So it's very easy to end up going between threads and then having to pull your needle back out and kind of go back in again, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it's not the end of the world, but yeah, it's not the most enjoyable experience working with yarn. And I don't think that's necessarily an issue of the drops yarn, but just cotton yarn in general would have that issue. 
Another whip that I had on my list is the Berlin scarf, which I'm not even going to bother unfolding it here. I've made zero progress on this since my last episode. I'm just pulling it out to say, here it is. I've done nothing. Um, so I really, I just need to finish the fringe and it's going to be one of those things where I know I'll just sit down and do it as well because it's not going to take me that long. Each fringe takes a few minutes. So if I just stop and put the energy in, I know I would have it done and over with, but it's not fun to work on. I really, really don't enjoy the fringe process on this. Um, and I don't really have a purpose for this scarf right now. It's starting to warm up here. It's getting sunnier. Uh, it's quite a large scarf, so I don't know. I plan to be a part of uh, Amy from Knee Knits Cal, fluffy scarf Cal, but it's done on March 15th and I don't think I will be taking any pictures of this in its current state. I was hoping to just actually finish it before posting a picture, even though she also accepts whips, but that's fine. Um, hopefully you guys are participating in that. And then the brand new project uh, on my whip list is the Gallant sweater, which was part of my winter knitting plans. And I had bought this wool folk uh, far four yarn, F-A-R. Um, when I was in Canada, I bought it at Statement Junkie. It is a chainette uh, merino, I believe. It's a worsted weight, 100% uh, wool merino chainette, 130 meters per 50 grams. So this is definitely one of the more expensive yarns that I've ever purchased. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can show it. So it's really light and airy. It is a gorgeous yarn. Um, I cast this on last Sunday and I'm already basically, yeah, I am through the yoke, which let me fix this. So it is feeling a tad small right now. Um, I'm really glad I double checked the sizing and the pattern and ended up casting on for a size medium because the sizing is a little bit weird in Kadri's patterns and actually let me go through the details of this. So this is the mohair gallant sweater. Obviously I'm not making it in mohair uh, and it's by Kadri and it's the first pattern I'm ever making by Kadri. And the extra small and small only have five centimeters difference and the way that she talks about her sizing is based on finished bus circumference with the positive ease. So when I was looking at that, I believe the medium had a final circumference of 100 centimeters and she recommended 10 to 15 of positive ease. So the small would have only given me one centimeter. So I opted to go with the medium, also knowing my gauge would probably be off on this. I did do a very tiny gauge swatch, which I've already ripped out because I need the yarn. And I partly did the gauge swatch to see, did I, like this yarn with a more open gauge on like a six and a half or six millimeter needle or did i prefer the tighter gauge of a four and a half so this is four and a half and i do think i prefer the look of this when it was really open and airy it just wasn't working um it felt too gapey so i maybe could have gone up to a five millimeter on this and it would have worked better I am thinking I might do a mid project block, but I, before this episode was rushing to get it to the point where I could split for sleeve. So I just did that. Um, and it does fit over. I do have a little bit of space under my arm. I know it will stretch in length a little bit. So I feel pretty good about this one. Um, and I think I'm just gonna continue because overall I'm liking the fit of it elsewhere and I definitely know I will get um, some more width out of it. So I don't think the final measurements of this are going to be exactly to pattern, but I expected that knowing I wasn't using the recommended yarn, I'm not using mohair. Um, and the only reason I'm using this pattern is because uh, it calls for a worsted weight uh, between two laces being held together and this is worsted. Also, I only bought six balls of this wool folk yarn in Canada or six skeins. And that really limited my pattern choices on this. Trying to make a garment 
with only, I think, 832 meters of yarn is very challenging. Um, so this did call for that. I'm pretty sure actually now that I had to size up to a medium, which I wasn't expecting, I think I am gonna have to buy an extra ball. I was doing some research yesterday because I was thinking, oh, okay, I should cast this on now so that when my dad comes in May, if I need him to bring me a ball, I can because the wool folk is I believe from the US. And so shipping here is really expensive. And I figured I could just buy an extra skein from the place I originally bought in Sherwood Park and then ship it to my dad. And that would probably be cheaper. But I looked yesterday and they're sold out of the color that I need. So I was looking and actually there is a German stockist. I can't remember the name of it. Even if I did, I'd probably butcher it. So I found they did have the color. Um, I can ship it from Germany. That will be much cheaper. So I really want to try to power through this one a little bit. I'm going to, I think, knit till the end of this, then start on the sleeves to see how much yarn each sleeve takes, because that will give me a pretty good indication of how many I need. Do I need one extra skein or two? Because I don't, it's 23 euros per skein, and I don't want to buy too much extra if I don't need it, because what am I going to do with... 130 meter skein after this. So this started, um, it feels so nice. Um, I was a little bit unsure when I was just working on the neck how much I was gonna enjoy this piece, but trying it on today, I mean, this color is fabulous. I love it. And it is so soft on skin, I can't wait. I can't wait to have this one. So I really highly recommend this yarn if you want to invest a little bit um, and you really like chainette yarns or maybe even haven't worked with one before and want to try one. I obviously can't speak yet to how it holds up and I know some of the other wool folk yarns um, have some pilling issues and maybe don't wear that well long term. So I'll report back on this once it's done, but so far just the knitting experience is really, really enjoyable. Loving it. Yeah, the only other thing to say about this is it is my first time doing lifted increases as opposed to just raglan, um, which I really like the process of them and I also really like the final look. Um, it's just so polished and interesting. So, yeah, um, nice to learn a new technique. I feel like that hasn't happened much on my recent projects. And I expect with how quick I'm moving on this, it might be a finished object by, well, it may or may not be a finished object. I guess it depends how much extra yarn I need and how fast it ships. Um, I don't have any acquisitions to share, as usual. I don't really tend to buy yarn. And I just released my spring knitting plans video and I was saying essentially I don't have yarn for anything other than one t-shirt. So for my winter knitting I had talked about doing the soft loop sweater from Other Loops and I was going to pair the Gepard Well and Soft with two strands of mohair to knit that. Now that we're end of, at the end of the winter season, getting there, I've decided I don't really want that sweater quite yet. I do want it eventually, um, but because I need to invest in more mohair to make this, it doesn't seem like a wise use of my money right now for a piece that I will just put into a bin and pull out next season. So I want to repurpose this yarn and I have a lot of t-shirts on my spring knitting plans. So I was originally thinking T number one from my favorite things knitwear, but the Capard also needs to be paired with a cashmere lace, which again will be around another 60 euros. Also, almost all the trim on that is folded hems for the sleeves and the bottom, and I'm not in a rush to do that again. So I was trying to find a t-shirt where I could do just the fingering with nothing held with it because I already have six skeins of this or six balls in this case, and I want to just make that work. So I have decided to make the Sonia T from Paula Strict or Suzanne Muller. And it is just a fingering weight t-shirt. Um, I think today, I after this episode, I'm going to swatch for it to make sure it works. 
because my intent is my husband and I are going to Italy this weekend to South Tyrol for a winter wellness trip. We're not skiing or anything. We are literally just going to spa and sauna and relax, which we both desperately need. And I really want a small project because we always travel with carry-ons and bringing a sweater isn't always practical. So I just want a tiny little project that I can bring and knit on easily, mostly in stockinette. So I think this is what I'm gonna bring, um, but I think there are some things that I need to start this week to make that happen so that I don't have all the like fussy details to work on. I would like to get to a point where I can just knit them around. So I'll swatch for this. Um, yeah, so I think this is gonna be a nice little t-shirt to kind of kick off spring knitting. It gives me a purpose for this Gepard yarn. I don't need to spend more money to make it. And then once I'm done this, I can really start with planning out my additional knitting plans and buying new yarn for those. Um, Cause I really do only wanna buy yarn for the projects that I fully intend on starting. So also after the Galan sweater, I would like to pick up a cardigan of some kind. And I am thinking, um, well, the Brady Loop um, cardigan from Other Loops is high on my list. But if that pattern isn't released yet, I think I might also cast on the Sophie sweater, also from Paula Strict or Suzanne Muller. Um, and I do like how her patterns are written. The Berlin scarf is the first one I've ever done by her and I'm really enjoying it. So uh, a few people commented already on the spring videos saying they have worked on that sweater pattern. They love it, it fits well, it's really easy to read the pattern. And so maybe I'll already buy some yarn for that. So those are kind of my upcoming plans for the immediate week. And the other thing I wanna mention is I have talked a lot in all my last videos about the Milady's dress. I am finally ready to get this one kicked off. So I was trying to print the pattern at work. Um, I was trying to print the, print the pattern at work because it's 39 pages and I feel like this is one where you really don't wanna just be going back and forth in a PDF because there's a lot of information to keep track of. So I got that printed out this week. I finally found a printer in the office that doesn't have toner issues or we have one that has like these weird um, lines going through it. And I swatched. So I, the only reason this is on try on tubing right now is um, because I needed my three millimeter needles. So I do need to um, bind this one off and then block it because in this case, um, Ines from Vertnet really stresses you must have the correct gauge. And because this is also in three millimeter needles, I'm thinking I can also double check the gauge of my Cumulus T because it was also three millimeter with the exact same yarn and just see, okay, with wear and blocking uh, and having a bigger piece, how did that hold up? And then what I also wanna do with this swatch is try applying the I cord to see how that looks if, I were to do an in the round project. So I'm still not 100% decided if I'm going to try to knit that in the round or knit it flat as the pattern says. Um, Ines gave me a good recommendation and said add maybe two purl columns in the middle so that also I can differentiate that in the round piece and be able to apply the I cord. And I may actually swatch um, to do that and then see if I apply the eye cord to that, how does it look? But right now, so this is actually not the color I'm gonna use, this is just pure silk that I had left over from actually the Milady's top I attempted to make last year and scrapped. So I just wanted to see with pure silk how it felt. I intend to buy the petroleum blue, but you can actually buy the yarn for this pattern until you take all your measurements. So today, this is my homework. I have 39 pages to go through. I have multiple measurements to take of myself so I can confirm how much yarn I need. And then I'm gonna go ahead and buy that and hopefully cast it on. And my intent is to do a vlog of the process because quite a few people have said they're really interested in it, but they're scared to do it themselves. And so they're very curious how I make out with it. Um, also, a few people have mentioned they will probably cast it on with me. We're not doing an official cal, 
but when I am ready, I will post on Instagram just saying, okay, who wants to be part of a group chat for emotional support? And then whether it's on Instagram or WhatsApp, we'll just start a small closed group chat so that we can kind of cheer each other on and ask questions because this truly is like a made to measure pattern. And it's, I've never seen any pattern with this level of detail. You need to take many measurements, do lots of calculations. There's a whole Excel sheet that comes with it. And I mean, that's incredible. I think this is worth the 18 euros that you pay for the pattern, but it's really a commitment project. And so I think my initial timeline of having it done for end of May is really not realistic, but I would like to work on this as sort of my main project for the next few months not give myself a hard deadline, just have it as a piece that I know when it's in my wardrobe, I'm gonna love it, enjoy it. I think I'll be able to like throw a cardigan on over it and wear it quite a bit. So that is one of my main projects that I wanna do this spring slash summer slash maybe even fall, we'll see how long it takes. And hopefully I will be good about documenting the process. The thing is I tend to knit a lot in sweats, no makeup, no bra, glasses, so I'm usually like a hot mess while knitting and it's not when I want to pull a camera up and start documenting my process. So we'll see how I actually get along with that because I've never done a vlog kind of thing before. But I do think this is one where there's not a ton of projects on Ravelry for it and I think a lot of it just has to do with everybody really likes this pattern but is really intimidated and I'm hoping it really isn't that intimidating. And so I wanna show the process so that hopefully more people will feel comfortable casting this on and giving it a try, but let's see how it goes. Not making any promises that I'm gonna even be able to finish this, but I have really good intentions and I'm very excited. I don't know how I ended up talking for nearly an hour today because I felt this would be a pretty quick episode. Um, but it was really nice to share so much progress with all of you. I feel really good about where my knitting's at right now and the projects that I am dreaming about for the upcoming season. If you like this episode, please comment and like. And also, if you want to see more of my content, see progress in my upcoming podcast episodes, please go ahead and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications so that you get notified of any new episode that I post. I tend to post podcasts every three weeks, so I try to share the progress. Um, and typically in that time, I have quite a lot to share. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.